hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I've got for you a study with me video. I did a video about what it's like to study with the Open University a number of months ago and I've had a lot of lovely comments um, and a few people have requested that I make this video so I thought I should give it a go. Uh, I have watched a few online as well myself since and it is something that I really enjoy watching. So here we go. I'm actually halfway through a degree in physics with the Open University, so whilst I'm not a teacher or an academic professional, what well, I can show you are the things that work for me, so the techniques, the habits, the tricks and so forth, so hopefully you can find some tips in here for you. Location is really important, you have to pick somewhere really inviting. I like to pick a room that's got natural lighting and a nice view. Try and steer clear of areas with a television or a lot of people are going to be toing and froing. Take my advice on this one, never ever study in bed else the inevitable will happen, you'll start to get comfortable, and you'll fall asleep. If you remember just one thing from this video, leave your phone alone. The amount of hours of potential studying time you will waste on this is incredible. There's a really great app out there called Forest, which you can set the time that you don't want to play with your phone for, and it won't let you play with it. Materials as well are really important, so it's super duper important to have all of the course materials that you need, so practically things like the book, some paper you're going to write on, but I'm going to show you a couple of the other materials that I use which really help and aid in my studies. So for example, I've got like a daily planner and I'll show you some of the stationery that I use as well. So one of the things that I always like to have to hand when I'm studying is my weekly planner. So I didn't actually use this in my first year and I found that sometimes I'd miss either a deadline, hopefully not, but you know, it can happen. I might miss a deadline for something or miss a tutorial or not realise exactly where I should be. So I found that since I've been doing a weekly planner, I'm a lot, lot better and far more organised. So the types of things I have on this planner are the dates of any tutorials. So again, things that you don't want to miss. I've then got, well, I'm doing two separate courses this year. So for each course, I write down what it is I have to do. So whether that be reading a set amount or doing some questions, whether I have an assignment deadline, as you can see there on the third line, and whether I have any other supporting materials to read. So you can see there for my other course, I've got a bit more reading, a bit more information to do because I've got some clips, some exercises and some quizzes to complete. And then I know it's not quite the 18th yet, but just in the spirit of being organised, I've got down some upcoming deadlines just so I can make sure I absolutely don't miss them. What I like to have at the bottom of each page as well are my weekly goals. So sometimes, I mean, it's all well and good thinking you're going to get all of these things done. But sometimes if it's busy in work or if anybody has children, you might find that you fall a little bit behind sometimes. These are the three things that no matter what are the most important to achieve. So, for example, at the top there, I've got an assignment that I have to hand in. There's two chapters that I have to understand. And just again, reminding myself that I've got that TMA, my tutor marked assignment in a couple of weeks. So I find that this overall just makes sure that for the week I'm focusing on the most important things and not forgetting anything. Something that I've done since school as well is just to put these little kind of square boxes on the end of each activity just so I can see at a glance how I'm doing and again just make sure important things aren't missed. So I'm going to take you through a couple of my materials. So I've already spoken you through my weekly planner. As well as that you're quite obviously going to have like the books that you need for your course. Uh, so the things that are absolutely essential loads of paper and go through several of those every single month for taking lots of notes so I'll talk you through in a little while exactly like the method that I use and how I go about studying but this is just materials um, doing a science course so I'm doing a double maths course this year quite clearly I need a scientific calculator so I found one that was kind of really user friendly one that isn't too complicated and one that's super reliable so I find this one to be really really great um, a ruler so for underlying key points it's got lots of other uses as well, so you can like rip paper neatly, swat away people who are distracting you. <laughs> so many things you can use that for. Lots and lots of pens, so you don't want to give yourself any excuses not to study. So you don't want to kind of come home and think, oh, I can't find a pen, I won't study. Make sure you've got lots of those. I tend to have a couple of colours as well, so I've got like green, black and blue knocking around. I don't even know what that is, just some random pen from Smiggle, I think. Um, so lots and lots of different colour pens, so if you've got like a different section or want to do like a different colour for the chapter heading or to mark an important point or to sort of do like bubbles around things, then I find having a couple on hand really useful. Always make sure I've got a few pencils as well, so sometimes you've got a few diagrams to draw and I'm horrible at drawing so it takes me a few goes, but if you need to like fill in columns or need to change data, so especially doing maths where sometimes I could make like an incorrect calculation and need to sort of rub it out and try again, really really useful. 
I really, really like these. I got these from Smiggle over the summer. If you can see there, they're some miniature donuts. So they're little scented erasers. So a bit like what I said, you know, it's not, whilst it's not an essential study aid, and even though I'm 31 and should be way more grown up by now, just having a few sort of like funky and bright things in the room just helps me feel like a bit, it's a bit more fun or like it's a bit more of a novelty. So hopefully for anybody doing any sort of like GCSE, A-level or degree, you will know what this is. Absolute genius. So another study classic, I always like to have a highlighter on hand just to make sure that I'm pinpointing the very most important information and that I can find it again quickly. Now I'll get into how I actually go about studying. So like we saw in my planner, I had to read chapter six. So what I'd go and do is have a little read through the chapter in its entirety. So before I actually make any notes or attempt any of the questions, I just like to read over it all just to get a gist of what it is exactly that I'm going to be studying. So to get an overall feel and to know the themes. Once I've read through it all and I have a gist of the material, what I like to then do is interact with the material. So it's not enough to just kind of read it through once. I like to go through the highlighter and make sure that I highlight any really important issues or equations or things that I need to memorise. Something that I make sure that I do as well every time is to, as well as interact with the material and highlight and read, to actually understand and complete the questions that are being set. So during my first year, I tended to look at some of the questions and perhaps like skip over a bit of it. Um, but then I'd find that when it came to exams or it come to assignments at the end, if I haven't done all the variations of the questions, I wouldn't really fully understand the material. So I'd really highly recommend answering every single question that you can come across. Um, sometimes as well, if I find it quite hard, I will go online and find further resources and questions just to make sure that it really has landed. So just to recap, that's how I interact with the matter. So I don't just read through the chapter and think, OK, I get it, I know it, I only if only I could. But I make sure that I read through it once. So like I said, the main points kind of start to go in. I um, also read it once just to sort of know what it is I'm going to be talking about. I then go back over the material and interact with it. So highlighting key points, rereading any of the key boxes just to make sure that I don't have like a scratching the surface knowledge that I really know what I'm talking about. Um, and finally, I'd strongly recommend doing any questions or exercises that are given to you, because like I said, sometimes if you come then to an assignment, you'll probably know the answer to the question, whereas if you've only dipped in and done one or two questions, they might bring up something that you don't already know about, and that's a trap that I definitely first fell into when I started studying. If you get stuck on a topic, first thing I'd suggest to do is not to panic, because there's been plenty of times in the past with my course where I've come up against, against material and thought, I just clean can't answer it, it's not a strength for me, I don't know, it seems really hard. I can read the materials, I can highlight and do questions and it still won't go in. So if that happens, don't panic because there's still lots and lots of things you can do. So my first top tip would be to go online. So sometimes the way somebody explains one thing, it may not go in, but then when it's explained in a slightly different manner, it will. So for example, for me in science, if there are certain things in the book that just won't go in, I'll have a look online at alternative resources. So for example, for science, there's a great website called the Khan Academy, and they explain things in a slightly different way to the Open University sometimes, and normally one or the other is kind of better. Um, so again, so look around online, shop around, there might be some more resources that are more kind of along your sort of learning style. Um, secondly, is change the format. So again, there's been times where I've read things and read things, I've looked online, I've looked at my normal course materials, and it won't sink in. But if you go on like YouTube or watch a video or kind of anything where you can like interact with the material, that could really help it as well. So I find that sometimes if I've read something and it hasn't gone in, I can look at a video because I'm quite a visual person. And the way that they explain that visually then makes it less sort of the penny drop. It makes sense for me. So again, don't just take the course materials you've got at face value. Remember, there's loads of stuff on the Internet and videos and you can even speak to tutors or support people as well. So another tip I'd say is don't be really harsh on yourself. So there's some evenings where I've thought to myself, oh, I'm a little bit behind, I've got to do like three hours studying tonight, or maybe four even. And that sounds quite daunting. Like you remember from your school days, who wants to do three to four hours where there's good things on the telly, your friends are up to things, you know, your partner's out making tea. Um, but don't be so hard on yourself. So break it up a little bit. So I think sometimes people get so sort of, oh God, I've got to finish this, I've got to do it, that they forget to have a fresh air break. They forget to have a cup of tea. They forget to like speak to people in their house. So studying is really important and you don't want to fall behind and the planner and the materials I've shown you earlier will help you do that. But please, please, please like help yourself. So make it fun, make it interesting. And if you do that, you're going to make yourself want to do it. You're going to train yourself to enjoy studying rather than sort of thinking it's just some arduous task. 
Okay guys, that's it from me today. So before I leave you, I just wanted to just reiterate the fact that I am not an academic professional. I'm not a teacher. I've just shown you the things that I find work for me, the things I find useful. There's hopefully some tips and tricks in there, but the message is really just to find what works for you and run with that. But nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, if you could remember to like and subscribe, that would really help. Um, and I'll see you on my next video. Thank you.